Good morning. My name is Manny Exlawak. Today, we're going to start with this seminar, and we're going to be talking about the complete programming of the OmniHub and OmniLogic. At the same time, I'll be giving a little bit of explanation on the difference between these two systems. Any questions, please write them down on the question section, and I'll be happy to answer them at the end of this seminar. So let's start first by saying who we are. You probably already heard this, most of you, um, but Hayward was founded in 1925 by Mr. Irvine Hayward. It used to be a machine shop, but in 1964, Mr. Davis bought it and make, made it what is now Hayward. 2017, it was sold to a private equity consortium. As you can see, we have 10 manufacturing places around the world and distribution centers also. More than 2,500 employees. We have plants from the United States to Europe, China, Australia, and more. Just to let you know, these are the webinars that we have made so far and um, you will be receiving and will have access to all these videos. So in case you want to go back and take a look, this is what we have made so far from variable speed pump that was on when we first started to filtration, heating, which is gas, heat pumps, lighting, sanitation, automation on OmniHop, more in deep on how to install it, and OmniLogic. Today we'll be programming. Also, we talk about cleaners and then commercial pumps and filters this week and automation. So again, you will have access to all the videos and more information. So just keep tight to your emails and you'll have access to this. So let's talk about OmniHop and OmniLogic. What is this? Well, these are pretty much systems that will let us automate our pool. So we can have access to every single thing in our pool just simply by, by a touch of a screen or touching our cell phone or including voice command. So not only we have a controller that we can use and we can actually add more controllers like wireless controllers and a wall mount to go inside of a house, but also we have the free app where you can have access to your pool from a cell phone, a tablet or a computer. And now in days, it can be controlled by voice command through Alexa or even Google Home, which is a new thing. So a little bit about the hub. This is for the Omni Hub. This is the control center or the power board that we have where we do all the connections. And just a little recap from last week on this board. Anything that has to be connected to data will be connected here on this little bar, which we call the RS-485. And what do we connect here to data? Well, this will be variable speed pumps, smart relays, salt chlorinator, uh, sensor dispense for chemicals, and more, like a spot control. On the center, we have the connection for our sensors, which we have a pool water sensor, an air sensor, an optional third sensor, and then the bottom two will be a connection for a low voltage heater or a low voltage connection for a heater, either a heat pump or a gas heater. We also have a connection for a flow switch and then the connection for the controller and two valve actuator plugs. Okay, why am I saying this? Because when we come to the programming, you'll see that the system will be asking you where you plugged what you are programming. New app, uh, something, um, a new platform that we came up, more friendly to customers, a lot easier to handle and more modern. This is what it's gonna look like, the app on the computer. This is the original version. On this screen, we can see how we can control if we add the sense at the spend system, we can control our pH or our P and our balance, or we can simply see it to make sure that everything is good when we talk about chemicals in our pool. At the same time, we can see weather information, sunset and sunrise times, simply access, 
into all of our pool equipment. And shortcuts and alarms. This is a very important thing because these systems will tell us when we have a problem with our system, it will give us an alarm. And just to let you know, the alarms, we'll talk about them when we come to programming. But what the alarms do is that it will change the color of our screen from blue to yellow if it's a warning or to red if we have a major I issue and it needs attention. So what can we control with these automation systems? We can control every single thing you see here from variable speed pumps to water features. The water features can be controlled either with the valve, actuator valve, or simply with a uh, independent pump either single speed or variable speed, it's up to you. We can control cleaners, same way. Uh, we, can, we can control our lights, we can dim them, we can change colors, we can change the speed of the shows, and we can also control spa mode on both systems. Salt chlorination, including the sense of dispense mode, and heaters, up to two on the OmniHop, up to eight on the Omni logic to start. So this is what we can control with the Omni hub. Okay, remember the Omni hub is like the small version of the Omni logic, and we'll see that in a second. It's a system that's a little bit simpler, easier, and also more uh, economically accessible. So we can control up to three variable speed pumps by Hayward, Sooner we'll have changes on that to be able to control uh, competition pumps, but for now we're so far three BS pumps by Hayward. Three smart relays. What what is a smart relay? Well, these relays will turn on anything that is on and off, 120 volts, 240 volts. We call them smart because it connects through data or uh, through the through the uh, RS485 bar, so it communicates by signals. We can also add sensor dispense, which is a little chamber where we have sensors that can control and measure our pH and also our chlorine level through ORP. One chlorination system, either an Aquarite, Aquarite 900, or a Blue Essence. Two actuator valves. These two valves can be used to open up lines for water features or simply, if we have pool and spa mode, one of them will be the suction, the other one will be the return. So again, maximum of two. And then two heaters. One of them will be connected through a low voltage connection, which was on the little bar below the sensors. And let me go back just a second here. And here you see the low voltage connection for one of the heaters. For the second heater, we will need to use a smart relay to turn it on in case we wanna control two heaters uh, different temperatures for maybe different uh, bodies of water. Also, the system has Wi-Fi included, but you can also do an e in internet connection or Ethernet connection for a most for a solid connection about when we talk about Wi-Fi or internet. Now let's talk about the Omni Logic. This is the big system. This is uh, way more advanced. What can we control with this system? Well. We can control up to eight high voltage relays. Remember, these are the ones that turn anything that is on and off, like, like single speed pumps or maybe a blower uh, that is 120 or 240. The system can control up to eight low voltage relays per panel. And in this case will be for heaters. That way you can have control over eight heaters independently and you can turn them on Whenever you feel like it, maybe you want to turn on a gas heater one day and then maybe a uh, heat pump the other day. What else can we control? Up to eight actuator valves, electronic valves. Uh, it has connection for up to nine temperature sensors. It can control two sensors for ORP and pH. So it can control the sense of dispense mode that we have. And then we can plug in one turbo cell. This is already ready for, for a chlorinator. All we gotta do is just buy the cell and plug it right here. We don't need any panel. In case we, add a, we wanna add a second one, then we will have to add a complete system 
uh, and then connect that through data. In that case, we'll have two. But in this, in the case of one, all we all we need is just the chlorinator cell or a turbo cell. We don't need to buy the entire panel since it's ready for that. And then we can control up to 16 variable speed pumps by Hayward. The board, this is what it's going to look like. It's got a whole bunch of connection, fuses to protect the board. But what I, but I want to show you here are the connections for the programming. On the letter A, that's going to be my sensors. We have connection here for up to five sensors. On gas heaters or heat pumps, we have connection for four heaters. And then we have these bars right here with the letter E that we'll use for a connection for data data like variable speed pumps. We also have these letters D that in case we have a system of sense and dispense for chemicals, that system comes with a little plug. All you got to do is just plug it there. But it all, it, again, it's just a communication bus. And then on letter G will be the connection for a inside controller or a wireless controller. Also, we have connections here letter J for two sensors, two flow sensors. And here on letter K will be the connection for our chlorinator turbo cell. I know I mentioned that we can go up to eight heaters, eight valves. And by the way, letter C, it's for, for four actuator valves. I know I mentioned we can control more than that, up to eight valves, eight heaters, and nine sensors. Well, in that case, all we got to do is add an ex uh, expansion board that gets plugged in here on letter C, and that will extend that amount of actuators, heaters, and sensors. Also, what we get with these systems, we have uh, what we call OmniDirect. So what OmniDirect means is that our lights come with 10 fixed colors and seven shows. Well, if we install automation, we have the option of choosing OmniDirect during the programming. And that, that what that's, that's, that's going to do is give us 10 more colors, 10 more colors. And these colors are like different whites, orange, yellow, and a couple more blues. So they're, they're more like soft colors. Also, the changing between colors, it's very fast. It changes from one, one color to the other one directly in a matter of just one second. And then we can dim the lights with this option. And also we can change the speed of the shows. Okay, so now we talk about programming. First of all, I wanna let you know that Hayward, it's working to have updates um, one, two, maybe three a year, depending on what we're getting. Well, what do we get with an update? We get the option of simply just updating our system that has been installed for a couple years. But if something new came up, you can just download the software off the internet and update the system for free. So that's just pretty much like having a brand new system. Like you just bought it because it's got the new software. When we talk about the competition, the competition, you got to change boards, you got to change chips, and that costs you money whenever you want to do an upgrade. In this case, Hayward is giving the upgrades for free uh, from um, forever. So let me give you just an example. What is an upgrade? Or for example, like why would I, I want to upgrade my system? Well, I just spoke to you about OmniDirect. That came out last year, but before that, it didn't exist. So people get it for free. Also, I know this is not maybe for your for um, most of our countries, since this is for English, but we have the option now to change it to Spanish or even to French or other languages. So we have several things in the future. New things are going to come up. Like I said, maybe we'll be controlling variable speed pumps by the competition. All you got to do is upgrade the system and then you get that new feature in your existing controller. And how do we do this? Well, first of all, whenever we turn on the screen for the first time, you'll see something like this. Okay, and this is the, uh, this is welcome to the Hayward Pool Controller. Press OK to configure. And just to let you know, the bottom right 
button, which in this, in this case is for English, that if we press that, it will just um, send us to the screen where we can choose a different language if we want. Maybe it could be French or even Spanish. So after we choose this language, it will send us back to the main screen. Now, how do we update this system? Okay, so first of all, after you press OK, you'll see different configurations. Ignore those for now. And we're going to press the off button on the bottom left. This button will allow us to go to service mode. And this is where we want to go, service mode. And then it's going to ask you just a simple question. If, are you, if you're sure you want to go to service mode, we press yes. And then when we're there, we're going to see, we're going to see several icons. All we got to do is just scroll down or up until we find upgrade. We'll talk about, we'll talk about the icons later on uh, at the end of the, of the programming. But for now, let's concentrate on upgrade. So how do we upgrade the system? Well, simply press that. And then until now, to get the new software, we recommend you get a brand new USB. And it's also formatted, clean. We have nothing there. And then you plug it into your computer. You go to hayward.com slash firmware, and you download uh, all the new updates we have there. It's probably about six of them, OK? Just download them to that USB. After that, you plug it into this controller. And after you press that upgrade button on the middle, you'll see a list of items that we have installed in our pool equipment. In this case, we don't see that many, but you will have more depending on how big it is and what you have programmed or connected to the uh, panel. In this case, for example, the MSP, that's the main brain for the Omni Hub or the Omni Logic. And then we have a smart relay, a wiring hub, and so on. So after we select what we want to upgrade, we just press check, and then the system will pop into this USB. We open it, and we'll see the only software that is compatible. So it's not like you have to choose from that list of six that you downloaded. Simply, you just choose the only one that it's going to give you. You press check, and you just let the system work. Okay, this can take from a minute up to 10 minutes, depending on what is being upgraded and how old the old version was. But just leave it until, see, until you see 100%. Uh, you press check, and the system will reboot. After that, we'll probably have to do the same thing for the other components until every single one of them it's upgraded. If for some reason you choose one of the components and there's no upgrade available under the USB, that means that that system doesn't have to be upgraded. At this point, for example, the wiring hub doesn't need any upgrading. So that's, that's normal. It doesn't mean that we have any problems. It's just that it doesn't have to be updated. Okay, so after rebooting, Let's talk about the programming, okay? The reason for the seminar is to do a situation or, or example or a scenario of a programming. So what we're going to be programming here is two bodies of water combined. So that means we'll use both valve actuators, one for suction, one for return. We're going to be programming lights with the omnidirect option also a water feature for our pool and in the spa we're going to have a blower also we're going to have one gas heater in this installation for both bodies of water so let's start with the configuration all we got to do is press ok and then you'll see several options now not pools are the same so i will recommend we choose the middle one which is new advanced configuration that way we can start from scratch and tell it exactly what we have. <clears throat> Just a little reminder, our systems pretty much come blank. So you got to tell it what you have, what it does, and where it's, where it's connected. And it's very simple. This, it's not that complicated as you think. So after we choose that, here's where the questions come up. First of all, we need to make sure that everything's connected to the panel. If something is not connected, when we program the systems, it will not recognize what we call HUI, Hayward Unique Address. This is mostly for data, 
So if we have several pumps, for example, several, several variable speed pumps, we need to know what's the address or HUA of each one of them. So when we tell the pump, the, when we tell, tell the system, the pump on the left is for filtration, the system knows that the left one, which is HUA X B dash Ford C so on, it's the one that it's got to turn on because all of them get connected at the same spot. After we see that, it will tell us if we want to do a wireless connection or a wired. Uh, in this case, we'll choose wireless. Uh, if it's wired, all we got to do is just plug in the cable, select wired, and the system will be connected automatically. In the case of wireless, it's pretty much going to be like your cell phone. It will give you a list of Wi-Fi's around the area. We choose whichever we, one we want, and then we're going to type in our password or the customer's password. And after it's connected, it will show you the status. If every single little check mark is in green, we're good to go. If for some reason one of them uh, comes up as a red X, all we got to do is just press the little reboot uh, part on the top right, and the system will try again. And here's where the questions come for the programming. First of all, do we want to enable color changes? Most likely, yes. Remember, this is the part where the system or the screen will, will turn yellow or red, depending if we have a problem or not. Then after that, we have the option of choosing if we want our date and time to be uh, adjusted automatically from the internet, if we select yes, then the system will do it for you. You don't have to do anything. Otherwise, you can press no and just type in your address, I mean, the date and time manually. Then it's going to ask us if we have or if we want either the reading in standard or metric. If we choose standard, we're going to be seeing gallons, uh, Fahrenheit, and then parts per million for salt in a matter of thousands, like 3,000, for example. If we choose metric, we'll, we're gonna see liters. Uh, parts per million will be in like in something like in 3.0, and then it's gonna be Celsius instead of Fahrenheit. Then it's gonna ask if we wanna see our speed, either on percentage or RPM, revolutions per minute. This is pretty much up to you, whichever way you wanna see it. Then we have what we call the MSP ID. This number is gonna be very important because you'll need it when you wanna register the product. So in other words, after you're done installing it, you wanna download the app so you can turn everything on from your phone, for example, while well, you're gonna to have to create an account. When you create the account, what you're gonna see or what you're gonna be asked for is the customer's name, address, uh, to create a password and also a username, but then it's going to ask you for this number. This number is so because the cloud, after we register, the cloud needs to know which system to turn on. Every single one of our systems has a different MS, MSP ID. Okay, and there's not a single one that repeats, not even between OmniLogic and OmniHop. They are all different. Again, that way the iCloud knows, or the cloud knows, what system to turn on whenever you log in. So it's because you can do this, you can you can log in and turn every every single thing on and off from any place in the world. And you can change programs. You can do a lot of things, or simply just check your weather forecast. Okay. Okay, so now we go to the programming. How many bodies of water? Okay, in this case, remember, we're gonna do two. We have a pool and a spa combo. So we'll choose two. And here you can see both bodies with a question mark. That means that those two bodies are empty and we need to program them. So we'll choose the first one and then we'll continue with the right arrow, not the check mark on the bottom, but the right arrow. It's gonna ask you what type of uh, body of water is. In this case, we'll choose pool. You can change the name also, and you can call it something else. Uh, Mr. Miller's Pool, you can do whatever you want with the name. And then it's gonna ask for the size of the pool. This will be very important when we have chemistry uh, uh, systems 
So the system knows that the pool is this big and the system for chlorination has been running this long and the chlorine level does not go up and then it can give you an alarm. So the system knows uh, how this works depending on the size of the pool. Filter pump, okay, every single system is gonna have a filter pump, so that's already given, but again, you can just uh, click on that little box and simply change the name to whatever other thing you like. What type of pump is it? In this case, we'll choose variable speed pump, but we have the option of two speed and a single and single speed. We'll be programming single speed a little bit after for our water feature, but in this case, we'll go with variable speed pump and you'll see here the options for the variable speed. First of all, the system needs to know the HUA, like I said, um, Hayward unique address. We click on the empty box, we can select something and take note here you see that there's no device available. Why? Because the pump is not connected. I made this little sample like this, so you guys can see that if there's no address to choose for that pump that you have in the plumbing, that means that that pump is not connected to the system or something is wrong on the connection. Maybe the wires are in different spots or one of them is broken. So you can see here that nothing comes up. Okay, in this case, we're going to ignore it, but later on, later on you're going to see how they do pop on those, those um, addresses or HUAs. Then we're going to have the option of choosing minimum and maximum speed. What is this? This is the minimum and maximum allowed. Top, the pump itself, the minimum is 600 and the maximum is 34, 3450 revolutions per minute. Well, we can make adjustments if we like. Depending on the situation or the installation, maybe we don't want our pump to go above 3,000 revolutions per minute for some reason. Well, you can adjust this, and later on, when we have the controller already up and running, we'll see that the maximum we're going to be able to go to, it's what we set it for that in my example or in the idea that I just said, it was 3,000. Well, you can do the same thing with the minimum. Maybe you don't want it to go to 600. Maybe you want it to go no lower than 1,000. You change it here, and in the future, you're not going to be able to go below that unless you go back into the um, configuration and you do changes. You can do that choice also by percentage in case we're not too familiar with revolutions per minute. Well, here we have the option of changing this. And then here we have these... Um, easy access buttons that later on we can choose and they'll be called low medium high and those low medium high whenever we click them the pump will go automatically to the speed that you see on the screen so you can make those adjustments from right here from the beginning for the easy access buttons later on do you want the valves uh the pump to turn off when the valve change what is this well whenever a valve rotates the pump will shut off for safety. This is all gonna depend on the plumbing. It's gonna depend on which direction the valves rotate. The point of this is that if for some reason a valve needs to rotate in a way that is gonna be blocking the flow, then we gotta we gotta choose this option. So whenever that whenever it rotates, the pump shuts off for safety, and then when it's done rotating, it goes back to one. Flow monitoring. We can, we, can, we can install a flow sensor and we can choose here yes. So that way, if our pump for some reason does not come on, but the system think that, thinks that it's on, well, the sensor, since it's not closing, it will send a signal saying there's definitely no flow. Uh, so it's a safety thing. Do you, wanna, do you want to enable priming? It will be up to you, but you have the option of yes. In the case of yes, we can choose how many minutes we want it to prime for. Crease protect, it all, it's all gonna depend on where you're located. What does this mean? That means that if the pump or the system detects that the temperature is getting pretty cold, before the water freezes in the pipes, the pump will come on and other equipments too, to move the water so it doesn't freeze inside of the pipes and then burst the pipe or something. So we have that option and this will depend on where you're located.
how many heaters do we have? Remember this in this in this sample we have one heater and it's a gas heater. Do we want a uh, heater cooldown enable? What does this mean? This means that if for some reason my pump shuts off at 5 p.m. and the heater was on, it will turn off the heater at 5 and it will let the run the pump run for another couple more minutes so it can cool down the heat exchanger. So it's all going to depend on what kind of heater you have and if you want it or not. Heater extent enable, what does this mean? Let's talk about almost the same example. Pump shuts off at 5 p.m., but I have, a, I, have a, I have a party tonight. So I turn on my heater today, uh, I turn on my heater uh, around midday, and at 5 p.m. when the pump shuts off, the temperature never got to the point that I set. So what it's gonna do is keep the pump on until the temperature is reached. So it's a good feature because if you want to turn on your heater uh, someday, there's a reason for that, and you don't want to surprise that the water never warmed up because the pump shut off four hours ago, and your part's about to start. So it's a good reason to put it or to enable it. Maximum temperature. You have a choice here of a maximum temperature. If you change this, then when you are playing with the controller after it's done conf uh, with the configuration, you're not going to be able to go above this. This is a nice safety reason. Maybe we don't want the pool ever to go above 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So that the last thing you want to do is maybe somebody, maybe maybe a kid is playing around with it, and and you don't you don't want it at the last point that the pool is heating up to 104, and maybe you're wasting gas or you're wasting electricity without a reason. So you can adjust this so it never goes above a certain temperature for your pool. You'll have the same option for the spa when you do the spa programming. And here we can see our heater with the question mark. It's empty. We got to program it. So we'll choose, we'll, we'll, we'll click on it and then continue. And then it's going to ask us what type of heater is. In this case, we'll choose gas. We can change the name if we want. And then here's the question about the uh, HUAs. Where is it wired to? We'll click on the empty box. And then here you can see that we do have options. In this case, we're going to choose LVR, which means low voltage relay. That's the connection for our heater that was on the bottom of the sensors on that green bar. So we'll choose that one in this case. And then more questions are going to come up about the heater. Does it have a valve that rotates uh, whenever the heater is on or off? In this case, no. Remember, we have only two connections for the OmniHub, and we're going to be doing a pool and spa combo. If we have an Omni logic, then you can add a third valve and choose yes and use it as a bypass. Minimum speed, what does this mean? Well, maybe the heaters, the flow sensor will not close, the flow switch will not close when the speed is very low, like for example, 20%. So maybe we want to bring it up. So whenever the heater turns on or you turn it on, the speed will go up so we can have enough flow for the heater. And when the heater is off, it will go back to its regular programming. And here we can see how our heater has been programmed. Now we don't have an empty box with a question mark. Now we have a box with a flame looking picture. After we have that done, we, in this case, we press check to get out of this area. Don't press continue because then you're going to be going through the same questions about the heater. If we're done with the icons, we press check mark to get out. Do we have sense of dispense module? Remember, this is for chemicals, a system that will control our pH and our chlorine level through ORP. If you have one installed, you press yes, and then you'll jump into questions like, what is the set point for the pH? What is the set point for the ORP? And what is the safety alarm? How many hours? But in this case, we'll choose no, since we don't have one. Remember, this is just this is an ex example that I did for you guys. Chlorination, do we have a salt chlorinator? In this case, we're gonna choose no, but in the case that you choose yes, the questions will be what percentage you want it to work on, 50% production, 100% production, it all, it's all gonna depend on the pool. How many cleaners? Well, in this case, we have nothing. 
In case we had one, it's going to ask us what type of cleaner is, robotic, pressure, or suction. And it is, if it is a suction, if it's connected to a pump or to a valve, if it's robotic, it's going to ask us if it's connected to a relay, which is going to have to be. So we have to choose what relay for the voltage. Water features. Do we have any? In this case, we do have one in this program. So we're going to choose one for the water feature. And then here we see the water feature that is empty. So let's program it. We click on the, on the uh, icon or the little square with the, with the question mark. And then we press continue, which is the right. And then it's going to ask, ask us what type of it is. So we just choose from there. We can have water slide, water feature, fountain. I mean, you name it but you can change the name later on for something you like. Uh, does it have an actuator valve? In this case, no. This, it, this is gonna be connected to a single speed pump through a relay. So does a pump water feature have a pump? In this case, we put yes. What type of pump? Single speed pump. And where is it connected? And here we can see that we have two options only. In this sample, I have connected two relays. So in this case, we'll choose the first one that ends up in D4. So the system knows that that pump is controlled by that smart relay. We want freeze protect. You're gonna get this question with pretty much all the uh, piece of equipment. It's gonna be up to the um, area where you're at. And here we can see that we have our water feature program. We don't have no more question mark. So after that, since we have nothing else to program on this section, then we're just gonna press check mark to get out. In the case we had more water features, then you will have more boxes and we'll just keep on choosing the next one with the question mark and then program that and then the next one, if so. When we're done with them, we press check mark and we're done with that part. Do we wanna configure any lights? Yes. So we're gonna put yes. What kind of lights are they? Uh, in this case, our universal color logic, 14 volts. You're going to have the option of incandescent, other, or simply our color logics, the uh, older ones like a 4.0 or 2.5, but most likely uh, everything's going to be universal color logic or other. How many relays is it connected to? One relay in this case. And which relay is it? The second one, the one that ends on 09. And as you can see, I have no more relays connected. So I'm done with that part. We'll press check. Do you want to test for Omnidirect? Remember we talk about Omnidirect, which is choosing more colors, speeds on shows, and dimming the lights. We'll put yes, and it'll do its own testing. Okay, this will take probably about 10 seconds, this part of the page. But then when you get to this part, you just press the check mark, and that will probably take about a minute to end up with the uh, successfully programming OmniDirect for the lights and the relay itself. After that, we press check, and then we'll see that we have our lights programmed. They're done, they're ready, and after that, since, we're, since the uh, icon is complete, we're just gonna have to press check mark. Accessories, any accessories? In this case, we don't have any. Okay, so uh, we'll jump to that. We'll see that for accessories on a spot, we will program one. And here you can see how our pool, it's done. We're done programming our pool side. The section of the pool is done. Now we're gonna jump to the second body of water. And all we gotta do is click on this icon with a question mark and then press continue, not check, continue. Remember, we're not done programming all the bodies. So we'll press continue. What type of body is it? Spa in this case. What is the size of it? A lot of these questions are gonna be pretty uh, similar. Okay, what is the size? 600 gallons. And then does the spa share equipment with the pool? Yes, remember we have a pool and spa combo. So on this diagram that you see here, we see how our pump, we have one pump only with one filter, one heater, but the important part is the suction. Here we have an actu actuator valve that will electronically move so our pump either sucks water from the spa or from the pool. So this is a, a pool and spa combo. And then at the at the return line, we have this, an, a second one 
And we have two more, but ignore these. Uh, but we have this last one that will change directions either for the pool or for the spa. So whenever you go to spa mode, those valves rotate. And then the pump will be sucking water only from the spa, heating it up to 104 degrees, for example, and then it returns only to the spa. So in other words, it separates both bodies. And that way we can heat up our spa to a higher temperature without having to heat up the whole pool. So if we choose that, here we come with the speeds, maximum, minimum allowed. That will be up to you. Uh, this is, uh, these speeds will work only on spa mode, not on pool mode. They, they have their own programming. And same, same thing with the uh, EC access buttons. We also have the option of, change, of choosing the speeds. And then it's gonna ask us if we have a spillover. Spillover, it's gonna depend on your plumbing. It's gonna depend on how you plumb all the equipment and especially um, the return side of it, if you use check valve or no, or not. So it's gonna depend on the plumbing. If you have any questions on this regarding diagrams, you can let me know, and I'll be happy to help you with that. At the end, we're gonna give you, give, give you our emails. So if anything pops up, you just let us know, contact us, and we'll be happy to help you. And here we see how we need, now we need to program, uh, program our actuator valves, the return and the suction. Simply we click on the empty boxes and then we choose which valve it's gonna be for the return and which, form, which one for the suction. That's gonna depend on which little socket you use for each valve when you plug them into the main board. And here we see that we have both both of them program. Valve number one is going to be for a return. Valve number two for our suction. Heater cool down. I explained that. It's up to you. If you want that, I repeat, this is in case the pump has to turn off. The heater was on running. It's just going to let the heat, the pump run a couple more minutes, shut off the heater so it can cool down the heat exchanger. And then same thing with the heater extend in case you have a party. Remember, if the temperature didn't reach, then the pump will keep on running until the temperature reaches. Maximum temperature you want for the spa, that'll be up to you. Um, a lot of places don't like the water to go above 100 degrees, especially for safety or just too hot. Other people love to go up to 104, sometimes even more, but that's not possible since the maximum is 104 by law. Cleaners, I never seen a cleaner inside of a spa, but you have the option. Water features, we already did one for the pool, so we know how that works. Do we wanna configure any lights? No, in this case, we're gonna choose no because we already did the pool ones and the, the pool and the spa are all attached to the same transformer to the same relay. So they all gonna turn on, on and off at the same time. But in case you wanna add another relay, in another transformer and have control separate from the spa and from the pool, then you will choose yes and you'll go to the same program. So that, that way when you turn on your pool lights, only the pool ones come on. And then when you turn the spa, only the spa comes on or you can turn both of them on for everything on. In this case, we'll choose no. Accessories, yes, we have one, we have the blower. So we see here empty box, just click on it press the right arrow you see here, and then it's gonna ask what type of accessory it is. In this case, we'll choose blower. You can click on that box after you choose it and just, just simply erase it and type in whatever name you want. It could be maybe if you had a couple, you'll call blower number one, blower number two. Does it have a pump? No, no, no pump. Uh, sometimes you can choose a pump, works in combination, so you have more or extra strength in this case, no. It's just gonna be connected to a relay. So we'll choose yes for relay. And here's the empty box so we can choose the HUA. And here's another note, look at this error. You can see here that we choose HVR1 and that was for our water feature. LVR1 for our gas heater and the HVR1 at the bottom that ends on 09, we choose that for our lights. We have no more options, okay? We have no more relays, so we're done. Either 
we need to connect one more relay here so we can have another one so we can choose for this blower or simply we do have three relays but one of them three high voltage relays but one of them is not connected correctly so again note if you don't see an option that means that we don't have it but you can add up to three on the um, omni hub on the omni logic you can add you can just add more relays up to 10. so it's all going to depend on which system you use but you see that the point is that if it doesn't appear we have no option of an hua or address does uh, does it have a valve this blower no we don't have a valve freeze protect uh depends on where you're at and we can see here that the blower it's done being programmed then we press check mark to get out of here and here we can see that we're done programming our pool and our spa both of them have a little picture no more question marks from this point we'll go with the check mark on the bottom to exit this area and now we go into sensors this is almost we're getting to almost to the end this is going to be a lot quicker so do we have a water sensor yes of course we have a water sensor and which one is it sense one pool temp if it's wire if it's wire in that spot why do we need a water sensor in our system the system needs to know what temperature has the water in order to turn on a heater this is for safety if it doesn't know what what temperature the water is then it's not going to turn on a heater oh so it's going to ask us for an air sensor yes we'll choose sensor number two air temp and this is very important to have it for those areas where we choose freeze protect so so the system knows when the temperature is getting to a freezing point normally the sensor of the air actually well the sensor of the air when it gets installed it's just installed out in the open wherever uh there's shade and not the sun is be beating on it and then the water sensor will be installed in the plumbing as you can see here we have two empty spots so we if we had a flow switch we would have to choose flow switch for that option and then sense number three which is sensor that would be optional maybe if you had solar panels to heat up your pool you will need another sensor up in the roof so it will ask if you have a flow sensor in case we do have it we just we just choose the address that i told you and at the end you'll see the sensors that are programmed when we see this little box we can delete one, we can add more sensors, as you, as you can see with the uh, trash little icon, trash bin, and then, or the plus. But if we're okay, if we're, if we're done, then we press check mark to be done with that section. Do we wanna configure any backyard lights? Remember, when we program the pool in the spa, those are bodies of water. So when we talk about outside those bodies of water, this is where it comes to. We can configure backyard lights, uh, yes, no, it's all going to depend if we do have them and we have uh, op, um, access or options of connecting them. Do we have any accessories in the backyard? Like what? Like maybe a fountain or or some kind of a um, uh, waterfall? Well, it's up to you. You choose how many you have and then you just do the same programming as we did before. Do you want to add an interlock? What What is this? Interlock it's whenever you want something never to come on when something else is on so all you got to do is press yes and tell them which ones you never want them to be on at the same time that's all going to depend on the installation or plumbing of your pool and then last it's going to ask us if we have a spot control this is something new we have spot control that will go install in the concrete on the edge of the spa this control is waterproof that way if you're inside of the spa all you gotta do is just uh, reach out and turn on or turn off or raise the temperature of the spa without having to have your cell phone exposed to the water for example and if we choose yes we just gotta program and tell it what button turns on what in this case the number two will turn on our blower and the one and three are empty uh, if we have more things we can just simply select it and choose what we want it to open and here you can see the configure configuration summary of all the things that were programmed take a look here remember at the beginning how i said my filter pump it was not connected so we have no address it's empty well it's okay because if you get to do the wiring later you don't have to start from scratch 
Later on, you can enter the configuration. And when you do that, you can go to the uh, pump, the bodies of water, select your pump, and then choose the address. And then that will come up there now. So after we see this configuration summary, we press check mark to be done. And then it's going to ask us if we're sure about that. And we'll choose save and restart. The system will reboot. And after, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute, we'll come up to the main screen and this is what you see. First, the ball on the left side, we see our pool body of water. If we touch it, it will send us inside of all the equipment that is programmed to the pool. But if, if you can see these little arrows on the bottom left, this little arrows will jump from the pool mode or pool body to the spa mode. And then you can do the same thing. Here we can see that our pool is up, we are in pool mode. Water is 85 degrees because our pump is running. We can go to service mode with the bottom left if we want to. The time and this time will be changing to give you forecast, air temperature, and the time and date. And then the right side you see icons of EC axis. Features, if we touch that, it will tell us every single thing that we have a program in the system. And then we have the light so we can access our lights. We can change the screen color for a better view, either day or night. And then heating, we can enter heating so we can select or change the heating point of our pool mode or spa mode. If we choose daylight, this is what it's gonna look like. White and black. Again, this is for a better view during the night pretty much or during the day. Here we can see that we jump to spa mode and spa mode is 77 degrees, but it's heating and it's set for 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And then on the right side, we have the icons again, but if we press the little arrow that we saw before, here we can see it on the right side. Okay, this little arrow here. If we press that, then it will jump to next to more icons. And what does these icons mean? Well, favorites, that's in case we had an OmniLogic with a lot of equipment. Well, we can choose there which ones we have we want or we prefer so we have a quicker access to them. Then we have the configuration icon. We'll talk about that in a second, and also the alarm. And themes. What is themes? Well, themes whenever you do a combination of systems that by pressing one button, a lot of our piece of equipment turn on. For example, I can, pre I can do party mode. And, and whenever I touch that party mode button, after I created it, then my lights come on, my spa mode comes on, the heater comes on, and maybe my laminar jets and my water feature. So a lot of things come on by pressing one button only. So you have the option of doing that, and you can do a lot of things also. If we enter the screen when it's where it said pool, we'll see here the icons. Let's go into filter pump first. This is what it's going to look like when you get in filter pump. And this is what the buttons mean. First of all, you can turn it on and off. And then you have those easy access buttons that I spoke to you when we were doing the program that um, from the factory that comes set to 18% of speed. 50% and 100%, or you can simply press custom and choose a certain speed as you want. Also, we can do on the right side, we can do timers, we can do egg timers, and then if we do timers, oh, here's what it looks like when you turn on the pump for a second. And if you do timers, it's gonna send you to, send you to a list of timers. If you have none, what you gotta do is just press the plus button, as you see here in the bottom. And when you do a press, you, when, you do, when you press the plus button, you can, you're going to create a timer. And this is what it's going to look like. You have the start time. So you tell it what's, what time you want it to start, what time you want it to end. And then if we pre repeat, we can choose what days of the week, maybe every day or maybe just weekends. It's going to be up to you. You have the, the option of doing so many programs and there's so many timers. I think they're like about 256 per item. And then you choose the speed for that specific timer. When you're done with that, you'll see how here you program, you can erase it. In this case, we choose to do it only for Thursdays, 
on low speed from 12 a.m. to 12.01 a.m. This, this is just an example. Again, you can erase it or you can add more to this. When we go into the heater icon, this is what's going to look like. All we got to do is just turn it on or off and then select our temperature desired. And also you can do timers for this heater. If we go to the lights icon, we can see here how we have, to, we have the option of turning on one of our seven color shows, turn it on and off, do timer or do a neck timer, and then we can change with this little icon. So we can choose a solid color. Remember, if, remember that we, if we have OmniDirect, we're going to be having up, we're going to be having a list of 20. All we got to do is just scroll to the right side, and you'll see the other colors. And then if you press the bottom icon here, that's where you can regulate the speed of the shows and the brightness of the shows and the solid colors. That's the screen for our lights. And almost at the end, configuration, if we click that, we'll see several icons or little taskbars. Uh, and this is where we can choose language or change it, adjust our day and time, uh, connect to Wi-Fi in case we had an issue with that. Display, check the brightness. We can restore the configuration and start from scratch. And I'll, I'll mention that in just one second. We can do a backup, and I'll talk about that right now. We can see the system info. System info is where we can find the MSP ID in case we forgot it. We can add, we can just click there and access, and then configure it. Config wizard. Config wizard is where we want to enter um in order to uh on the on the sample that i did um add the address of the variable speed pump or add more things or simply change or erase something if you enter configuration it's going to ask you for a password the password will be the just the system iphone number the system info number or the msp id that's going to be your password okay so in this case we're going to choose backup and what does backup do? Well, in the case of backup, after we're done doing the programming, it will be nice to have another USB and then do a backup of the programming into your USB. Uh, that way, in the future, if for some reason something happened to the system and the client erased a lot of info, instead of you trying to go and reprogram it or trying to find the issue, you can just stick that USB and in a matter of 10 seconds, you will have the original programming, like the first day that you did it, when it was downloaded to this USB. Also, and that's the same thing for restoring and doing backup. Also, if you have a project where you have several pools and they, they all are identical and they all have this automation, you do program one of them, you back it into USB, and then you can go to the other system, just plug it in, and restore it from the USB. And last, here we can see the alarm uh, page. If we ever have an issue with an alarm, this is where we're gonna find it. So if you see the screen that is ye yellow, we go into the alarm page and we'll probably see that maybe we are low on salt for the chlorinator. Something simple, more like a reminder, warning, something like pay attention to, uh, not urgent, but it needs attention, but if you see the the, uh, the screen red, you go in here, and maybe you can find something like a water sensor shorted, or flow sensor shorted, something like that. So one of those alarms, every, anything will pop here. Also, you'll get um, messages to your phone telling you there is an issue. So to summarize, just want to let you know that we have two big systems. We have the Omni Hub, which um, it can cover a lot of things, uh, up to three variable speed pumps, three smart relays, two heaters, one chlorinator, sensor dispense, Wi-Fi ready, and you can plug in a Ethernet core for internet. And then we have um, and two actuator valves that you can plug in. And then we have the Omni Logic, where you can go with eight heaters, eight actuator valves. Uh, nine se uh, temperature sensors and control 16 variable speed pumps and then you have space for up to 10 relays 
this both systems are programmed the same way. Uh, there's only one part number for the Omni Logic, one part number for the Omni Hub. So they all, all you gotta do is just add relays or or add features to that. You don't have to get a specific uh, model for a pool only or for a pool and spa and combo or for pool and spa separate or for a four relay connection or eight relay connection. In the case of the Omni Hub, all you gotta do is add relays. The Omni, but I'm sorry, the Omni Logic, all you gotta do is add relays. And the Omni Hub, same thing. You just add relays up to three. And remember, we can control pretty much every single thing you have in the pool or actually every single thing that you have in the pool. So again, uh, you will, uh, have access to the uh, past videos in case you want to see one of them if you haven't if you haven't received that access yet but you will have it and here's our information if you have any questions please write them down in the question se section and uh, if not if something comes up pops up in the future just send us an email Roberto Sablon regional sales manager for the Caribbean in Latin America there's his email rsablon at hayward.com and then my name is Manny Ixlawak, Technical Manager for the Caribbean and Latin America. And you can see there my email. So I don't see any questions. Thank you very much for your time. And we hope to see you soon. Please stay, uh, please stay safe. Sooner than later, this will um, pass. So let's just pray for that. Thank you. And you have a wonderful day.